This is John Responding for MaxBoxing.com and Seconds Out. I'm in Hayward at Andre Ward's gym speaking with the man himself, Andre Ward, who on March 26th is going to be fighting Sullivan Barrera. Uh, Andre is the now former, which is weird to say, super middleweight champion, but he's moving up to light he heavyweight division. And um, this is his official first pro fight as a light heavyweight, even though you were in the light heavyweight division as, a, as an amateur, as maybe not a lot of people know. But I wanted to say, Andre, you know, the first time we spoke was you were 25, and now, <laughs> now you're like 32, you're getting older, and I don't think I'm getting any older, but isn't that shocking to think that it's been seven years since the first time that, uh, that I interviewed you at King's Gym in Oakland? It's pretty crazy. Is it crazy? Has it gone fast? I just appreciate your support, man. Um, support appreciate is hard to find, especially long-term support, so... It's been seven years, and uh, I am getting old, man. I just you are turned, getting old. I just old. turned 32. <laughs> I can say that I'm getting seasoned. Seasoned. <laughs> getting okay. seasoned. I like that word. I like that word. <laughs> now, let me ask you about it. Let's go back to the Paul Smith fight. Now, here we go. Now, you told me a few minutes ago you don't read anything, so that's good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get your opinion on this. What did you think? When you fought Paul Smith, you dominated the fight. You broke his nose. You won. I was there. I thought you looked good. Some people didn't think so. Now, I want to ask you. What did you think about your performance that night, and how did you feel in there after a pretty long layoff? Well, I did what I had to do. Mm. I don't know. You know, at 32 years of age, you don't. <laughs> I've been in the game a long time, and yeah. it's not a lot that surprises me in terms mm -hmm. of what's said or what's written. You know, people are entitled to their opinions. God bless them. Um, some people are gonna like you. Some people aren't. Some people are never gonna give you your just due. Some people. You know, they're always behind you. So, I, 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 you know, I was pleased with the performance. We did what we had to do. I mean, it wasn't, you know, yeah, I was pleased with the performance. Did you feel real good in there? There's a few extra pounds, and I don't know if people really understand that about boxers. You know, the few extra pounds can make a difference. Did you feel real comfortable in there that night? Yeah, I felt fine. I mean, I don't, you know, he was real big. He came in overweight. And yeah. I think he was about 190-some-odd pounds like that night. And, uh, um... My opponent before that, Edwin Rodriguez, he came in overweight. Mm -hmm. He was 190-something pounds the night of the fight. So, uh, yeah, we dealt with it, <clears throat> and we did what we had to do. And, uh, like I said, I'm pleased with the performance. Okay, let's let's talk about your fight in two and a half weeks with <coughs> Sullivan Barrera. Uh, Andre, you know, I've asked you a million questions the last seven years, and I don't think I ever asked you this, so here you go. Do you watch video of your opponents before you get in the ring with them or you do like Money Mayweather and just get in the ring and just figure them out as the fight goes along? Nah, what you, what you do? I, I watch film. You I, do? I watch film. I'm a student of the game so I watch film and, and see what I need to see. I don't, you know, I wouldn't say that I watch film every day but I do enough to see what I need to see and uh, been, you know, again, I've been around the sport for over 20 years so, you know, it doesn't take long to notice certain tendencies and certain things that you need to see in an opponent so, yeah, definitely we watch film. Uh, have you ever seen him fight uh, live or anything, <clears throat> Sullivan Barrera? Uh, not live. No, not live. Okay, so you're going to fight him on the 26th. Um, are you hoping to have another fight after him? I just got to focus on this. You know, my yeah. team's working on maybe a second fight. Um, I just we, you know, you guys know how I do it. When I got a fight coming up, that's it. You know, it's not about literally. It's not about anything else. And. You know, I think I think you know my team does a really good job of that. You know, we we have blinders on. You know, we have blinders on, and, and I think that's how you got to be. You know, and it almost comes off like you don't care, and you know maybe you're a little rude. That's not the case at all. We're just really focused on 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 what's in front of us. Um, the stakes are always high when we get in the ring, and there's no room for error. So we have to approach every opportunity and every situation like that. And those things tend to work themselves out. You know, down the road and at the right time. How about the challenge of fighting at the Oracle? I mean, you know, you're the, you're the hometown fighter. There's a lot of distractions. Are you? That's got to be a challenge sometimes, right? I mean, you got a lot of responsibilities. Yeah, but it's it's part of my job, you know. Whether mm -hmm. I'm on the road or whether I'm in my hometown, you know, I have to be a professional. You know, mm -hmm. I have to um, do my part to to greet the people and make them feel welcome and and, and, and let them know that I see them. But uh, but uh, but uh, on the same you know token, I have to. I have a job to do. Because uh, nobody wants to see me leave that ring without getting my hand raised. So um, it's a fine line you got to toe. And, you know, I wouldn't say that I've mastered it, but we've been in that situation, you know, uh, 
probably the seventh time I'll be fighting there, I think maybe seventh or eighth. And um, hey, it's just about focus. You know, it's about focus before that night. It's about focus on that night and, and obviously during the fight. So, you know, you want to give the fans a show and you, and you want to acknowledge them, but there's nothing better than a victory and, and, and a great performance. So that's first. And then after, man, you can celebrate with everybody when it's all said and done. How about the the hunger issue? I I I, I wonder about it. You know, when you were 25, when we were sitting there, man, you were hungry. I could feel it. You were pumped. It's like two weeks before the Kessler fight. Yeah. And I thought, man, this this man is ready to go. And and you proved it that night. Yeah. Now you as you just used the word a little while ago, you're seasoned. You still feel the same hunger that you did when you were 25. Yeah, it's 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 different, but it's the same. You know, um, and I think I think the key is it's how you dedicate yourself. You know, what are you, what are you doing um, when nobody's looking? And, you know, I compete with myself every day. You know, eff effort is between, you know, me and myself. That's what effort, that, that's, that's where the challenge is, that's where the fight is. And, you know, when I assess myself personally, uh, there's no let up. You know, there's no let up. So if I felt there was a let up, I wouldn't put myself in a situation like that where I come in halfway, I wouldn't do that to the fans, I wouldn't do that to the sport. I have too much respect for, for the sport of boxing to even play around like that. And it's too dangerous of a sport to, to go in there uh, halfway. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still hungry, still competitive, and, 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 you know, not taking nothing from any opponents, same as I was when I was in my 20s. Okay, only one question about okay. Kovalov, since I know you're so focused on March 26th. You've seen him fight. Tell me what you think about him as a fighter. He's a good fighter. Mm -hmm. I don't see any weaknesses right now. So he would be the ultimate challenge if you get into the ring with him, which seems... I, mean, I don't know if it's the ultimate challenge. I think he's a challenge, you know. Um, got a lot of respect for him. I appreciate how he's going about his craft. Uh, he goes into other people's backyards and, and does what he has to do. And uh, he's willing to fight anybody. So any, any fighter like that, you got to respect. But, um, you know, March 26th uh, or the Kovalev fight, whatever it is, like <clears throat> these are moments that I've been groomed for since I've been a kid. You know, we literally talked about these things you know, mm -hmm. as a kid. Mm -hmm. And you don't know if they're going to ever come to fruition, but these are things that we discussed. These are things that I not only dreamed about, but I've been working towards since I've been a kid. And a lot of sacrifices involved. So when I approach these moments, you know, I try to keep them in perspective and realize that this isn't just you know, something I stumbled upon. This is something I've been bred to do for a long time. This is an opportunity I feel like God has given me. And uh, my part is to, to prepare myself as best I can in every area, mentally, spiritually, physically. And then we go out there and let the chips fall where they may. Okay, get two and a half weeks. Tell me what kind of performance. I know you don't like to talk, but I'm just going to ask you. You've been training. I don't think you're ever out of the gym. I think you're like the old basketball term, a gym rat. I think, you know, you even during your layoff, I'm sure you were working out like you always are. What kind of exp uh, performance do can the fans expect from Andre Ward on March 26th? I think they're going to see an Andre Ward that's in tip-top shape, and I think it's going to be a very surprising performance, you know. Um, a lot of people are just, you know, having a superficial opinion about size and power and this and that and strength, and, and I don't think they're going to realize that, you know, uh, I don't think Barrera's going to be uh, stronger than me in that ring, you know. Um, but that's typically how my, my career has gone. People look on the outside, they see one thing, ah, uh, it's not that, you know, not that big a deal, and they get in the ring, and it's like, whoa, it's a lot different. They lied to me. So I think it's going to be the same type of situation. Um, I know he's a good fighter. Uh, don't take anybody lightly. Uh, we're preparing for him like we would for Kovalev. There's no difference in the preparation. There's no, we don't play the name game. Um, uh, and I know they're out there doing a lot of talking and um, from what I hear, and, and that's cool. And God bless you, man. You just got to back it up March 26th. That's true. I was, was going to ask you. I'm glad you said that. Now, here's a question that I might ask you a long time ago, and I don't remember what you said, but he said he was going to knock you out between eight and nine rounds. <coughs> does a fighter say that to build his own confidence, or does he say that to to try to get under your skin a little bit? What I do you think? I don't really know, man. He's got to come stronger than that, though. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's got to come stronger than that. I mean, I, you know, but I, this is the deal, though. I'm going to take him at his word. Mm. So, okay. um, I'm going to take him at his word, but it's, it's not going to be what he thinks it's going to be. Okay. It's John responding from MaxBoxing.com and Seconds Out. Thank you, Andre, for doing this. Thank Good you. luck on March 26th, and we'll see you there. Thank you, man.